Good day, everyone, and welcome to episode 585, the 24th of May, I think. Yes, 2018. How you going? How was your week? Hopefully, it was great. Uh, we are coming to you, or trying to come to you live on Facebook. Yes, we've finally done it. Jordan's worked it out, so we'll we'll thank him in a second. But yeah, he's, uh, he's downloaded his OBS software, and he's punched in the Facebook key, and hopefully all going well. It's, uh, it's, it's streaming live, so we hope to be, if it's a success, we'll be doing this every week from around about 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au if you want some uh, nice little web hosting with SSD drives, SSL certificate, register your domain, and we've also got a website builder, drag and drop, which can't get much easier than that. Install your Joomla. Uh, WordPress and Drupal quite easily and without any hassle at all. You can find us on facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads, youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. The website with all the show notes is at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast. Jump on the Twitter. You can get some news in your little feed if you like, at Aussie Tech News. Uh, you follow the show, which we don't really post too much to Twitter, but it's at Aussie Tech Heads. Or you can follow me, which I don't really post too much either, at Glenn Goodman. Uh, the Aussie Mac Zone is also on the uh, doing the rounds on the iTunes, so don't forget to uh, download that and have a listen to that. Michael, Zahn and Garth, they're all in there talking about Apple and, geez, they're going to have something to talk about next week, I think, when the, or no, is it next month when the WWDC rolls into, uh, I don't know, wherever it is, North America somewhere. And also, uh, my tech opinion with Shane and Phil. Shane, of course, over there used to be on the show and he is joined by Phil. Shane's from WA. Hey, Puts a, I don't know, do you reckon they get a different perspective over there? I don't know. We'll have to uh, listen and find out. The Aussie Tech Crypto, I believe no show this week. Jason's computer blew up and uh, Windows 10 update stuffed it. So I've got a story about Windows 10 update coming up. Uh, maybe some of you guys have had trouble with that as well. But that's, yeah, so but the Aussie Tech Crypto. And uh, yeah, cool. All right, uh, let's bring in the other guys. We've got uh, Jordan and Joe this week. So let's start with... We'll start with Joe. We'll just say a quick hello to Joe and then go to Jordan. Hello, Joe. Hi, how you going? Good. Fresh from the sea bit. So how was that was yes. good? Yes, it was great. It was three days of technology and gadgets. It was on it was unreal. All right, good stuff. We're gonna ask Joe a few questions in a minute, find out what he saw. Uh but let's say good day to Jordan. Hey Jordan. Hey mate, how are how you? you? Going? Good. I'm on edge tonight. Oh, he's on edge. <laughs> I'm on edge, and I don't just mean the uh, browser. No, <laughs> no. Well, uh, I'm you... on edge. I've got. I'm a bit. I'm feeling a bit like you, mate. But you're kind of running yeah. everything behind the scenes while oh. you're still hosting the show. Oh yes, it's uh, there's a bit to do, but but once you push that live button, it should all be should all be good. But uh, yeah, good work for working that out. Uh, so uh, the software that you're you, OBS, that's a free download, isn't it? I believe. That's... Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd never even heard of it until Jason mentioned it to me last week, and then I've been sitting here all week looking at it ever since. <laughs> yeah, so it's so. just like a every. I don't know if you're into live streaming or video recording, you probably would have heard of a thing called Wirecast. That's what I use. I bought that. It was, I think, it cost me about six hundred or something. And uh, yeah, and like I've got version six up to version nine, but that's the thing with these things. You know, I'm, I might even start looking at this OBS because you just get your Facebook key and you just punch it into the OBS, push a couple of buttons and away you go. You got, you know, switch cameras and titling and all this and you can stream it straight to the Facebook. So that's pretty good. Uh, so hopefully the Facebook is working. So good stuff, Jordan. Good work. Uh, well, let's uh, look, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll go to one, a self-indulgent story first. Uh, look, this weekend is the the uh, Salvation Army Red Shield Appeal door knock. And I think I posted this onto the Facebook page. But uh, this podcast, our podcast, as well as a, as a host of others, are donating our show and the messaging in and around it to support the, the Red Shield Appeal. So that, what that means is when you download this episode uh, in, the, in the current week, around the 26th uh, of May, the 27th of May, and that sort of week, uh, you should get the Salvos ads probably before and after the show. And what that means is that, uh, yeah, all the, the money that is raised by doing that, that, that goes all to the Red Shield Appeal. So good stuff. Other shows Great. that are doing it, yeah, are the Australian True Crime, uh, Junk Time AFL, One Fat Lady and One Thin Lady. Sounds interesting. Sounds like those two fat ladies of the cooking show that used to be on. Uh, the Art of Decluttering. Mm, geez, I might have, to, might have to subscribe to that one. <laughs> and uh, True Crime Sisters. So they're all pretty, uh, 
all pretty good. So yeah, jump on, jump on some of those because they are supporting the Red Shield appeal as well. So uh, good stuff. All right, now where are we going to go? We've got to start talking to Joe about C bit. So so let me get some notes up here. What was going on over there? Now Joe, uh, C bit. What what is what's C bit all about? First, and where is it? What is it? And how long did it go for? We know you went for three days. What did you go for? The, was it all three days, or how long does it go for? Yeah, CBIT goes for three days. I was there for the whole three days. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah ma- mainly to do with um, businesses and uh, their technologies that are coming out. It's not really a consumer show, more, but it's more of a business type show. Right. And what's the what's the it is uh, crowd like? Is that like is it a big crowd there that gets there? Like, is it popular or what? What happens? Yeah. Yeah, the first and second day, I was very busy. Mm. Uh, the third day, it quietened down a little bit. Um, there were some schools as well coming along and having a look. Right. Okay, right, right. Now, so is it, what is it, just a, is it a plethora of new technology, old technology? Well, not probably old technology, existing technology. Uh, uh, you know, like what is, is it like a, is it like the big conventions over in the US or is it just a, just a more of an industry type of what's for sale what can we buy that sort of stuff yeah it's uh it's pretty much um a little uh, like the ones in the u.s but uh, on a smaller scale right they have um large companies there was uh, nbn there there was um uh some people doing um monitoring software um some other people doing some um, audio stuff. Yep. Some um, home automation stuff. Right. Um, so it sounds like it was pretty good. It was uh, it kept you entertained for three days, so that's good. Now, uh, what was one of the couple of the things that you saw? You see, you saw a VR. That's the virtual reality riding experience in a virtual velodrome. Now I've got a video that I'll play, but the, on the video, is that you on the bike? Did you have a go on the bike? Yeah, I had a go on the bike. It was actually good fun. Um, here you can see that um, you've got the uh, virtual reality headset on, and uh, above me there's a screen of what I'm looking at. Nice. And you'll notice that um, the bike stays very still, um, and uh, all you've got to do is just lean a little bit to your left um, as, as the bike's um, going around a corner, and uh, you'll see the... Um, the bike will, will slowly lean across. You see, you just oh yes, there, just, yeah, just, just, yeah, right. And that's 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 me going around a corner. Um, right. Yeah. So did it? Did you find that the faster that you pedaled, was it like as in was it like a real bike? Like if you stopped pedaling, you would stop. Absolutely yes. Um, the faster you pedaled, the the faster the bike would go, and the more attention span you need to keep on on the uh, on, on the track. Right, and, and what happens? Could you get like the uh, the death wobbles on on that, or, or not? No, nah, I, I didn't. Um, but you do if you're not used to it. You will get a bit of uh, dizziness, but I didn't get any. Right, right, that's good. Uh, so yeah, so another thing you saw was the. Did you have any questions about that, Jordan? No, no, not at all. It just sounds really amazing, doesn't it? Looking it sounds in, really good. That's probably something that you'll probably see these things in the gym, you know, sooner or later. You know, just instead yeah. of just watching, uh, you know, uh, Mel and Koshy or whatever they are on Channel 7 while you're doing your, your cross training, <laughs> you'll be able to, to actually do a, a virtual uh, velodrome ride. Now, something else well, you... Apparently, sorry? Apparently, you can, apparently they've got um, different type of scenes. This one here was in a velodrome. But you can get other ones that have um, riding through the cities. So as, as you're riding along the bike and you're leaning along, you've got uh, a view of the city in front of you. Nice. And uh, it, Yeah, like people crossing roads and things like that. And um, it's, it's just like the real thing, but you're actually st- uh, still in one spot and the, uh, the bike just rides along, you're using the brakes, and it feels like as if you're riding around in different parts. I mean, you can be in Paris, you can be in Rome. You can be in New York. There's different mm. cities you can go to. Yeah, and what was the the reality like? Did you actually did you feel mo- like motiony? Like you know, like did you, did it feel like you were actually doing it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah right. It was. Yeah, cool. Um, you know, if you if you leaned over a little bit with the bike, the bike had sensors. The the stand that the bike was on had sensors, 
and as you leaned over a little bit, um, it felt like you were leaning. You know, you might you might see that in the uh, in the Olympics they've got the uh, the bikes riding, and as as the, the riders lean a, across a little bit, um, you actually feel that. And as you're getting closer to the corner, um, you actually feel you you hug in the corner as if you're actually on the bike um, in the real track. Yeah, how cool is that? That's that's great. Yeah, uh, I've never really had a go at a good virtual reality set of goggles. I know I spoke to Jace about it when he got his Samsung goggles. I think. Uh, did it? What about your eye? Did it hurt your eyes? Like or anything? No. Was it bright or anything like that? It, did, it was nice and no, comfortable. No, no, no. no every, 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 this one here was one of the better ones. It had very good quality. Um, right. I never had a problem. Yeah, no, nice. No. Nice. There's very little screen screen effect, very little at all. Because I think oh, I might have to get down to one of these. Is it worth coming down, do you reckon, to the sea bit? Absolutely. Mm. I, mean, I don't know if you want to spend three days down there, but I, I did because I'm not, I not only just went and seen all the exhibitors, but I also sat in, uh, through a, a few seminars and a few uh, conferences that they had spoke of as well. Mm. I know because over the years, like it must, is it? I think it might be gaining in popularity because over the years, I kept getting sent these invites to it, and I thought, oh no, 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 no. And I think they must have been trying to drum up the business, so it might be, you know, getting some traction. So that's that's really good. I'm glad that if that's the case, I'm glad it is. Now, something else you saw was a Combox Integrate AV Touchscreen. Now, what was that all about? I'll, I'll play this video too. Who was who was your video? Oh, yeah. Who was your video man? Who's your cameraman? Yeah, that that was great. I mean, is, is, if you ever watched the Premier League, um, before and after the Premier League, uh, when they have their games, they got this really big table, um, as you can see there, the table, and, and and that's very similar, if not probably the same as the table that they're using. Right. Um, yeah. And it's it's all touchscreen. It's all it's. Can you imagine a big phone? That's what it, what's what it is. It's it's like it's like using a big handheld phone. Very so, easy to use. Very fluent. Um, there's um, there's no um, glare on the screen. Um, so how uh, how uh, who, who makes it? It's not. Is it is this this um, mob called Combox? Is that right? Yeah, it's a mob called Combot that make it, but uh, it's it's going through a company called Integrate Audio Video. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the company that's selling it, Integrate Audio Video Solutions. Yeah. They were the company that they understand. And as you can see there, I'm bringing up my web page, um, and it's look, you just see, it's very easy. Just, just touch mm. the screen very gently. It's and like a... It's, it's, it reminds me of what, like, the big Microsoft Surface tables, you know, and I think... Yeah. That, yeah, the yeah. That's sorry. The, yeah, the hubs, and the like, and the, the same thing you're All talking about. Yeah. yeah, the one that you're talking about that was on the end of the football games or whatever. They do the same if you ever watch Hawaii Five O. They got one of those big tables that's a computer. I don't know if you've seen. You yeah, know, the, awesome, the new series of Hawaii Five O, not the Jack Lord series, <laughs> of course. Yeah, now, that's right. See these things here. You plug your laptop into them or your computer um, via HDMI. Yeah. And uh, they support Windows, Mac, Linux, and Chrome OS. Right, right. And what sizes do they come in? Um, they the come screen. in various sizes. The one I was playing with over there was, um, I think it was a 49-inch. But they, yeah. they do come in uh, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 103-inch. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. That looks that, that looks like an awesome bit of uh, technology, doesn't it? Um, oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind having one of those. Oh, no. Guess that... how much they cost. How much? The guy told me that cost around about fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, right. Okay. Got to spare fifteen grand there to put towards Aussie tickets. Yeah, yeah. Get, get a uh, accepting donations right now. Accepting donations to help us. Yeah, that's right. Get get a uh, a uh, combox integrate. Now, uh, what else? Now, you, what's another one of the things you saw was a smart hub for home automation. Now. Home automation seems to be all the buzz these days. You know, Jace, they, the other week he showed us he's got some light bulbs he, he can control via Wi-Fi. You've got PowerPoints you control by Wi-Fi, aircon, fans, the whole the whole business. So what, what was the smart hub down there? What did you look, what was this smart hub all about? This one here that i seen is amazing. This one here has got like all different type of technologies built into it. It's not specific to one type of technology or another. This one here actually comes, um, it's got a, a built-in GPS system. 
Yep. Um, and it's also got G GSM. Yeah, that's the one. Um, it comes with, um, you can use it on Wi-Fi, but it only comes on 2.4 at the moment, uh, gigahertz. Uh, you can use BLE, ZB, Z Z Wave. Um, it also uh, infrared uh, receivers and infrared blasters. Now, what the, what does this thing actually do? What is what that is that thing there? That thing there is actually the the hub. It's a wireless hub. Oh, so it's like the controller of all things automated. That's it. That's it. Everything connects to that thing. So it looks like a little little uh, skateboard, doesn't it? It does. It does look like a little skateboard. It's probably about uh, 12 inches long and about right. uh, 4 inches wide. Right. Very light. Uh, it's very light. And so what, what's the go with that? You, what, do you just throw, stick it up on the wall somewhere? Like, where do you put uh, you it? Can put them, you can put them anywhere. Um, uh, you can actually sit them on, on the table, um, uh, on the, on, on the uh, back of a lounge somewhere. So all... Uh, Yes, so all devices connect to it, and it connects to your internet. Is that how that works? Correct, correct. Nice, nice. Now I think is uh, what did you have, Danny? You had a, did you have another? Oh, I had a YouTube video. Let's have a look at this. Uh, I'll get this one up. Let's have yeah, a look. This guy he explains how it works. If you if you listen to it, he explains how it works. Oh, I, I don't think we can hear the audio, but I'll, I'll play it and we'll see what see if we can understand okay, it. Well, I'll try, I'll try and explain to you as he's going along. All right. Yeah, so he. That's 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 the um the the unit there. You'll see it just there, just be, uh, just coming into the screen there. Um, it, it it's actually there. It is there, just there. It's actually got a little app that you can use to control it with. Oh yeah. Um, that little PowerPoint there. You'll notice that it's got on and off. And if you look at the screen there, it's how it's, the, the light turns on and around it. It turns the PowerPoint on and off. So what happens so, is yeah. So sorry. So uh, so on the screen, on your phone screen, you've got a picture of all the devices. So you just got a picture yeah. of a PowerPoint, picture of a whatever, and then you click yeah. the PowerPoint. Then you've got an off and on button on your phone, and then yeah, you yeah. Ju you just yeah pushing it yeah. like that. That's how it's working. Cameras. Right. So um, it actually works with Alexa as well. If you look at there, it's got the Alexa right next to it. So at the moment, he's going to command the Alexa to turn down the lights and pull down the screen, and you'll see it do that right now yeah. oh, how, oh how's that screen that's coming down what's that like a a, 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 a movie yeah. screen or something yeah basically he said use a uh, good night mode which is basically turn down the lights close the screens and that's did that. mm. now the thing i've noticed is like with this is getting a little bit off topic but like um uh, so everything seems to be integrating with alexa is this is alexa the next biggest thing is it like does it integrate with the google home or anything like that do you know or is it just at the moment yeah, it's just... it, it does it uh, integrates with the google home um with um any wireless speakers you can have any wireless speakers in the house so it's got an inbuilt media center so yeah, right. it, um, you, can, you can connect to it via bluetooth um wi-fi um it even connects to your sonos so you can use that oh, with your sonos i'm system. there i'm there yeah. <laughs> so yeah. now um okay so yeah, what do they? So they're not selling these things. So do you know what? What you know? Did they? Did you come across any retail pricing or anything, or is it was it all just show at the moment? No, no, you can actually buy them. They're available. Um, they they cost around about nine hundred dollars. Um, I think that's just a, a new price. But I, you can probably get them for a little bit cheaper. I've seen them a bit cheaper than that. And what? But that's what he from about nine hundred bucks. And is that just for the skateboard? Yeah, it's just for the skateboard. Right. Okay. And then, and then you've got to buy. You'd have to buy some sort of like the PowerPoint thing and the camera and the light thing. So yeah, they'd all. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, look, the thing I like about this particular one is that it integrates with your existing system. So if you have, for example, um, you know, light switches or uh, lights in the home. Um, with the access of uh, some sort of wireless little um, devices that you put in behind the wall, hmm. it actually integrates with that. Like right. Using the, um, uh, the Z-Wave system. Right. Okay. So so you, does that mean like, so you could go and buy some, uh, like a, a, a third party home automated item? Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah pretty much. I mean, it, it is a bit more expensive than your standard uh, uh, Samsung uh, smart hubs and things like that. 
Yeah. Um, but it does a lot more. It's more future proof, I'd, I'd say. Right. Uh, if, if I had the extra money to buy one, I would buy one of these because this one here, it talks to your Google Home, to your Alexa. That's good enough. All these other, like I said, your, your Zigbee and your Z Wave, um, they're all compatible with it. Yeah, that's the good thing. Is, yeah. It's, it's got really good uh, built-in firewalls and security, so it's not something that you can easily break into. Mm, yeah, that's all right. Uh, hopefully, it's not powered by the Cisco. Got a story about that later on. <laughs> now, uh, now, what the big question is? Uh, do you know? Did you ask if it was compatible with the the Apple Home Auto system? I could probably have a guess. Actually, <laughs> actually that's one thing I didn't ask him. I didn't ask him if it was compatible with Apple. Well, but I, I guess it would be. Really, I'd say we, we'll we'll take that. We'll go as a no until we eat it differently, because <laughs> so I know our, I know our Apple doesn't like yeah, to yeah. share, yeah. but uh, but anyway, yeah, we might find that out and we'll um, we'll let you know. But that's all right, Jordan. Do you have any questions about any of that or you, any comments? No, no, I don't actually. You're just sitting there I, in. I think you're pretty much just yeah, just nailing it all, Joe. Good work. Yeah, that is that's fantastic work. Yeah, this is. I've had a look at a few different. The most exciting things that's happened on our show for a few weeks. <laughs> Yeah, keep going, Joe. Maybe not. I'm just, it's all right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, now, <laughs> now who, i got to know, who who was your cameraman? Who was my cameraman on uh, at the show? Yeah. Me. I was a cameraman. Well, how, who filmed you on the bike? The, the, oh, okay. the exhibit. That was, one of the, that was one of the exhibitors over there. Right, oh, okay. A sample. Yeah. No, 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 no free gear for your, for your, you know, considering your status. No free gear. Uh, no, not yet. Um, <laughs> no, that's a, that's a shame. Yeah. Did you tell them that Aussie uh, Aussie Tech Heads were sponsoring you? Oh no, I didn't say that. But um, <laughs> he would have got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So um, maybe, maybe I should have. Eh? Maybe I should have. Yeah, oh, yeah, might have. They might have donated the cameraman, but yeah, <laughs> that looks uh, give you a lollipop or something. Yeah, so that looks really good. I think uh, next year that I'm, I might make a, a trip down for that. That looks good, Joe. Where was it again? Where did you say it was held at? That's it's Sydney. Uh, it's in Sydney in the uh, ICC. Yeah, right. Which is yeah. uni- actually next year. Um, I'll, I'll plan on going again. Yeah, and. Um, yeah. I'll probably get a better setup this time with better cameras and 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 do some proper interviews with people. So this well, was just like a trial and error type thing for me this first time. Yeah, no, it was a, uh, might have been a bit of a trial, but it certainly wasn't an error. That's that's great work, good stuff. Uh, yeah, very good. Yeah, all right, uh, all right. Well, let's move on to some stories and see what's been going on. Now, you would have heard me mention. Uh, so that oh, I'll just better ask Joe. Is that is that all you did, Joe? Is that all you had to say about that? Sorry. Just went on without asking. Is that all you wanted to say with the C bit? Look, the 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 the, the, the um the thing with um, C bit I noticed was the the big thing at the moment um, is uh, personal assistance and virtual assistance. Mm. Right, you'll right. Find, you'll find it. You, I'm not sure if, if you've got the video I sent you, um, but you, they've got a, like a little virtual assistant, They're like a little iPad type setup where at the doorway and you can talk to them. And there's actually somebody live that you could talk to, then, but they're across the other side of the world, or they could be the other side of the state. It doesn't matter. Right. You just I... need to be in there. And you can ask them questions. You know, they can respond back to you. Yeah, okay. That's, that's the next big thing. That's the next big thing. Yeah, I, I did get the video. I just tried to play it then. Something went wrong. Tell it's me. It's not virtual. It's a real assistant, but just not, not there's, there. There's, there's, there's two yeah. types. There's two types. You've got real assistants and you've got virtual assistants. Mm. Yeah. So real assistance, someone there remote, remotely. Is that what you're saying? It's like yeah, it's, it's like a like FaceTime, like a FaceTime, yeah, like face like timing, and then you've got virtual assistance, which is what like a, a Siri or something. Well, it's like a Siri, but it's also like a like a AI. cartoonized a cartoon version of a Siri. You know what I mean? Like a natural, mm. natural person, but it's cartoonized. You know what I mean? It's not like a real person. I guess like it's it's the maybe assistant. Is you know the FaceTime thing's pretty cool. I haven't seen people do that yet. It may be something yeah. similar to oh, I've watched a few like these real estate shows in the US, and they've got uh, I've seen one other shows actually as well. But they've got the like a little iPad that's on some sort of little ball that like a ro- thing that just rolls around the room and follows you around. And the person like if someone wants to buy a house in LA or wherever it is or New York, well then and and that person might be in Australia. They're on the iPad rolling around the 
thing in New York. It's mad. It's oh, yeah, pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah, like it's um, yeah, it's good. But yeah, the virtual assistants. I think, you know, all this Alexa and Google Home and and uh, all the other stuff. That's all all pumping, isn't it? It's all going. It is. I'm gonna to have to get involved because I was only thinking today I should get a Google like a Google Home or something. But then I thought, well, but everything I'm seeing is all Alexa. So I'm thinking, what? Which one should I get? Should I go Alexa or or should I go? Google Home is getting a lot of a get, lot of. Get, hey, hey, Glenn, get get yeah. both. I've got both. Um, yep. And I can tell you, there are two different applications. Right. Um, Alexa is more in line with processes and business needs and and uh, to do things, turn this on, turn that off. Um, it's good as also as a personal assistant, but I think that's where Google Home comes in. That, that's more um, more of a Google assistant. Right. You know, it talks to you better. It, it understands you better. Yeah. Uh, when you talk, it asks you things. I'm actually going to do a demo. I've got both. I'm going to do a demo um, in, in the next coming weeks on um, and asking the same question to both. And right. you'll find two different answers. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm up, there's one there where I asked him about uh, the Prime Minister of Australia and one of them got it right and one of them got it wrong. And I asked him about the captain of the soccer Which one got it wrong? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's time to come out and have a look. Uh, and, the, and the captain of the Socceroos, and uh, one of them got it right, and one of them got it wrong, and one got it really wrong. Like I'm yeah, right. really wrong. Mm, yeah, right. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so th- what is the only problem then with these things is that if you've got the Google um, Home in your bedroom, well, you obviously you can't talk to it if you're out in the garage. So, like, it's not. I, I think you can. Yeah. Oh, you can. Right. Oh, someone's wanted on the phone. So. All right, so so we'll leave that there. Is that is that all, Joe, about the C bit? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a whole heap of other things, but um, over the coming days and weeks, I'll be putting them on my website. So go and check it out there if you really really want to know. All right, and just check that out at Joe the Gadgets Man with an S, gadgets plural. Joe the Gadgets Man dot com or his Facebook page, Joe the Gadget Man singular. Oh, you should have put an S in that one too, the Joe. Yeah, there's a story behind that. Um, <laughs> okay. Which I, won't, which I won't share with you right now, anyway. All right, no worries. So, Gadgets Man on the web or Gadget Man on the Facebook. All right, let's let's uh, let's get into some stuff. Like, as you, we did mention, I did mention Cisco earlier. So, hackers have been, hackers infect more than 500,000 Cisco devices as malicious attack looms. Now, their Cisco has warned that attackers have infected at least 500,000 routers and storage devices in dozens of countries with sophisticated malicious software. It's been dubbed the VPN filter, and it could be used for espionage, we haven't had enough of that lately, to interfere with the internet communications or launch destructive attacks on the Ukraine. Jeez, they're, they're popular over there, aren't they? Um, now, obviously, Russia's got the bit of the getting the finger pointed at them for it, and they're going, nothing to see here. The VPN filter, VPN filter gives hackers remote access to infected machines, which they can use for spying, launching attacks on other computers, or downloading additional types of malware. So Cisco said the known devices affected by the VPN filter are Linksys, Microtik Netgear, and TP-Link networking equipment in the small and home office space, as well as QNAP network attached storage devices. Now the malware also includes an auto-destruct feature that hackers can use to detect the malware, uh, to delete the malware and other software on infected devices, devices making them inoperable. So that's not very good at all. Cisco was supposed to be the one of the best. But uh, that's no good. That's no good. So just make sure you... What do you do? You just... I don't know. <laughs> just make sure everything's as secure as possible, I guess. Um, yeah. Well, there you go. It's always, it's always the Russians that cop it, isn't it, for the hacking and the... It is. It is. I think, uh, I don't know who, who's doing it. Like, you wouldn't be surprised if it was half Chinese. They're smart little cookies, aren't they? So it's probably they probably Chinese as well. Um, now, look, I'll just go, what's the, oh, about halfway through. So, uh, look, I'll do another one. Now, there was a, let's go, what's an, what's an interesting one? Uh, well, I don't know. Let's have a go. Oh, this Windows 10. Let's do that one first. Because Jace had yeah. a problem with the Windows 10. Through the I week, I think there's been a lot of people having problems with, with uh, Windows 10 since this upgrade. Well, thankfully, so, and touch wood, my desktop and laptop 
uh, upgraded without a hitch, so that's good. So uh, Microsoft has stopped the rollout of Windows 10 for some devices uh, with select Intel and Toshiba SSDs. Now, Microsoft has halted the rollout of its Windows 10, April 10, 2018 update. Now, what happens is the company identified that select devices with T- Toshiba XG4 series, Toshiba XG5 series, or Toshiba BG3 series, solid state disk drives may exhibit lower battery life, and that select devices with Intel SSD 600P series or Intel SSD Pro 600P series may crash and enter the UEFI screen after reboot. And everyone knows you don't want to get stuck in that UEFI screen. Because I don't like it. Just give me the old BIOS. It's easier. Uh, as a result, Microsoft said it was working with the vendors to block devices with incompatible components and installing the update and said it anticipated the release date for the resolution for the issue would be available in early June. So in the meantime... Uh, they recommend that if you experience a problem, just uh, roll it back to the previous version. But that didn't help old Jace, because apparently it uh, screwed him right over. There was no previous version. So, I've yeah. got a friend who can't roll back or restore, go to a restore point, can't do anything. The only thing they're getting is that is the, the uh, what do you call it, the, the startup and repair screen. That's it. It loops Ooh. and loops into that every time. They restart straight into that screen where you've got the choice of um, doing a rollback or restore or going into safe mode. So he can't just... he can't get into that. But no matter what section of that screen they go to, yeah, they always end up back at the start of it again. <laughs> so what about it? They, they what... can't go anything past it. Yeah, right. At all. What that tried to hit rollback and they hit rollback and it just goes back to the main screen again. What about if, if you try have they tried to? Back? boot off the off a dvd and go repair have they tried sort of getting in that way no i don't think so maybe that no. might work there were a couple of yeah, where were they there were a couple of i've been googling it for them all week they don't have any of the uh they don't have, oh sorry it disappeared off your screen oh, where are you going? they don't have any of the uh discs or anything that they've just got the pc and you know right. windows is built to you know windows 10 is built to be easy to recover you know it's got all that that stuff built in mm. for recovery better than probably the previous windows so it's yes. a shame when the recovery section doesn't work either it's no good like you just i just can't help but think about all the you know the little old ladies you know they they do the update or it comes through automatically the computer crashes and they're on the phone they've got to spend two hundred dollars like to you know to, to get it back like that's just that's just terrible isn't it like i think microsoft mm. should have something easier or something i don't know what they can do but um uh, maybe they should i don't know laptops are I probably tried to make it easy in windows 10 but it just it's just yeah not... look i think maybe i suppose laptops are a little bit easier because like you know you can just probably go you know if f12 or whatever go into the you know recovery environment that's probably easy, I suppose. Little old ladies, they're to cheap. Those old images where, they, the, where the factory, the factory, you know, rolled out image that HP or Dell or whatever have were great. You just restore it straight back to what it was when you bought it. Just through, yeah, well, that's right. You lose your data. System that's been built into Windows 10 is supposed to make it easy, mm. and probably does in a lot of cases. Yeah, but um, but I guess it only rolls back if your if your rollback files are not corrupt. Well, so. this guy's got rollback on his. He's got. It's like it's he's had it for a long time. There's plenty of updates that have been since, so you can mm. roll back. But it just doesn't. It just goes back and says choose choose the user account you want to roll back with, or choose the whatever it is. Or when you go back to do a restore point, choose the restore. Yeah, but what about the actual rollback? The Windows the actual. Yeah, that's what it does. It does just you can't get into Windows to go and select it physically. You can only use that startup part that it's automatically booting into. But every one of those categories all default back to the first category. So mm. you get in there and you go, I want to roll back. And you go, right, all right, I'll roll back. Yeah. So what do you want to roll back to? Oh, I'll choose Windows 10, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Hit roll back and it goes back to the start again. It yeah, doesn't actually no go forward. Uh, have so, she's, so she's stuck in a, in a loop. What about you, Joe? Have you updated to the 2018 April? Yes, I have. I haven't had a problem. No, I didn't. I haven't really had a problem either. No, I, I'm, mine went straight through. It was good. I did have a problem with the video card last night, though, didn't I, uh, Jordan? <laughs> I'll fix I that now. 
I had a problem with the the app store. I told Jason that on the show last week that the the install button from the app store oh, yep. is not. It's only ever been a get button, but I've seen a few install buttons popping up, and I've read a few reports that that's happened in previous updates before, and Microsoft has released a fix for it pretty quickly. So we'll just wait and see. Mm, yeah, just wait and uh, see. Now, what, have you got any stories this week, Jordan? You said you had you found one. I haven't got many because I was busy with all these this software that we're using to stream with, and that's all right. I got call, I got a call in feature coming up hopefully in the next in the the, uh, the next week or next couple of shows hopefully we'll be able to receive How good's that? calls in won't we Jordan's bringing us into uh, we might ring 2018 in, we might ring and thank a few people <laughs> yes. or something we might ring old Will and see if he'll take a call <laughs> we might get him on the hop cold call yeah, <laughs> yeah. so, so cold call. Um, yeah what was the one that you picked out this week but I did have a quick one just yeah. one I quicked up um, just because I didn't want to feel stupid without one uh, Facebook's new two factor authentication process no longer requires a phone number. And the only reason I wanted to read this is because, and I can't read it, it's not scrolling. The only reason I wanted to read this was because it, oh, it's not scrolling for me, Glenn. Oh, no. Is it, are you still on edge? The article. Are you on edge still? No, I'm, I'm actually not this time. Well, I'm we can come back to you. Thing. We can come. My iPad thing. Look, I could probably just tell you that the cliff notes anyway, they've made it easier so that you don't need a phone number and I was, it made me think about this um this authy that you told me about um about well, a few shows ago you told me about authy and i went and looked at it and mm. it works in conjunction with google auth yeah so now they they've done something i think they've got some sort of app or something with facebook so you don't have to use a phone number so when someone logs in you don't have to have the text message sent back and forth because apparently it wasn't as secure as they thought or something yeah okay I can't read the article, but that's kind of where it was at. Hmm. That author is not too bad. Like I've only done a couple of, you know, sites with it, but um, but it's good if you have to do a double authentication. That's I think that's the one. Yeah. Because the the Google one, I think we've oh, said, I got said it. all it's this. But... There you go. Okay. Might... Fa face. Sorry. Facebook announced its change. Uh, announced it's changed how to set up the two factor authentication. The new process is intended to make setting up two FA more streamlined and eliminates the need to register a phone number. Where Facebook previously required a phone number in order to activate the two-factor authentication, it will also accept apps like Duo Security and Google Authenticator. Uh, the company also says the setup process has been refined, resulting in more simple, guided experience uh, when enabling the 2FA. Mm. Yeah, right. Uh, the update comes months after a Facebook admitted a bug in its 2FA system caused non-security related SMS notifications to be sent to users' phones. Facebook uses an automated number 36265 and its two-factor authentication number and the same number wound up <laughs> spending, sending people Facebook notifications via SMS without their consent. So they've had a bug and they've changed it and now it's accepting Google Auth. I always thought it was accepting both anyway. But now, talking to Facebook... Now, I want to know if you guys are going to send nude photos to Facebook. Is this, is this um, on your... If I, apparently, if I do, they've got it sussed now that they'll protect me. Is that right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You'd, be a no, you're a, you'd be a no like the rest of us, Joe. They're going to scan the photo and make sure it's not nude and then... No, that, it they... Is that right? No, they... Yeah, they... that's right. Yeah, I heard about that. I heard that they were having people working there, actually employed extra people to work there to get people like that and they close down a fair bit of accounts so what did I, well i heard i don't know what i don't know what you just said but my interpretation of it was you upload the nude photo of yourself so then if a nude photo of you goes up somewhere else by someone else it gets blocked yeah yeah something like that yes some kind of algorithm or something that does it but you know, Facebook's been so unsecure lately, hasn't it? I mean, who trusts? Well, them? why Everybody's would you? complaining about the data Facebook has on us. Do you really believe they're blocking it? Yeah, like, geez, fair income. But why would you What's even? What's the story? Have you've actually got a story on this, or are you just nah. no, no, no. That was I've, I read it through the week. It's um, yeah. that's to help them, you know, like with all this revenge porn and that. So, so if I so if, you know, Jordan, if I was to uh, want to get revenge on you. I had a nude photo of you for some reason, you know, and I thought oh, I'll just post it up on Facebook and pay you out. Well, then, because you've already sent a nude photo of yourself up there, it's like facial recognition, but yeah. I guess, but it's um, nude recognition, 
and it can it can recognize that there's already a previous noon photo that i put up there first and knows it's me is that what you're saying well it what it does that they don't pick the new photos i might have put up there <laughs> no but they don't they don't uh the, the, you upload the picture which which stays yeah. intact for uh, you know a couple of days they reckon it stays intact for a couple of days the picture is then like it's mapped so it's image mapped so it, it's not actually then stored as a picture it's stored as some sort of image map so you can't mm-hmm. sort of bring it up on a screen and re look at it can't see it it's probably just like a code, of, the code yeah that's right it's been about something like facial recognition you know so uh, yeah and then they, the computer goes oh look um yeah, that's that's Jordan because his eyes are too close together, you know. So that that's him, and it just no, it just knows. So and it just knows because my eyes are close together. So, you know, something like that. That's an example. <laughs> As an example, you know, I don't a know. Second there, I look. A second there, I look like. No. Valcor? No. No, your eyes are all right. I was only joking. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Uh, yes. Is Valcor is that his name? I can't Who? remember now. Who's Velcor? I don't know. What are you talking about? Big fluffy beard and the big ears. Is it Velcor? Is that his name in Never Ending Story? I can't remember. The big dragon. The big Bloody dragon in the story of the old movie. You don't remember it. I'm nah. showing my age. More, more like Wars or Gummage, maybe. What was the big, what was the Never Ending Story as a kid? You never saw that growing up, that movie? I knew the song. Yeah, I did see it. He's flying on a dragon at the end. Yeah. And the dragon. What was the dragon's name? Puff. Was it Velcor? <laughs> Something like that. Know. Was it? I oh. keep thinking it was Sebastian. It wasn't Sebastian. I think that was the I don't kid's know. name. Was it? I, don't, I can't remember. Don't Too know. long ago. Anyway, moving on. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, did you have any stories, Joe? Or, or, or were you just concentrating on CBIT this week? Sorry, I wasn't oh. listening. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> He's just concentrating. We're all, we're all in the land of uh, the never ending story at the moment. No, I, was just, I was just saying, just before I go on with the rest of my story, I was just saying, did you have anything else? Any stories, Joe, that you wanted to bring up, or was it you're just at sea bit this week? No, mainly a sea bit this week. Um, there will be other stories coming up soon, but I haven't got around to doing them yet. That's all right. Yeah, no worries. Well, you just will just go through the rest of these stories, and you you can chime in whenever you like. Uh, so I, I've got. I'll see a... if I can help you out, Glenn. I'll see if I can spot something while you're. Um, That's all right. While I... you're doing your next one. Yeah. No. No. I've got. I've got a few. I've got enough to to run us out. Good? Don't worry. Enough to. Fill the show? Yep, I certainly have. Well, nice. well, well, this next one here will fill the show. I can talk for hours. Uh, Doctor Who. That wouldn't be a bad tell show, would it? <laughs> no, no, it's Doctor Who, my favourite subject. Uh-huh. <laughs> Are you? Do you watch Doctor Who, um, Joe? No, I don't, I don't watch Doctor Who. No, do you know what it is? Who? I know what it is, but I, I'm not, not, not into it. familiar with it. No, I haven't been following it. What about you, Jordan? No. I'll just talk to myself then. Anyway. I've tried. I have tried. <laughs> All right. But I, I just, there's just something about, I don't know, it's just something about that the accents in, in those sorts of shows. Ah, oh, I love it. I now, can't even stand most Australian accents, and I'm Australian, and I can't handle them on TV. Well, the good news is there's that... Something about the American accents on TV is just smoother for me. I don't know what it is. No, well, they're probably a little bit smoother, I'd say, but uh, the Pommies have got better, uh, better shows, better comedy. But anyway, anyway. Probably. Uh, yes, they do. I agree with that. They yeah. are funnier. Doctor yeah. Who on Twitch. Twitch is joining forces with the BBC Studios for the first ever digital broadcasting event of classic Doctor Who stories. There's over 500 episodes from 26 se- seasons, dating from the first story back in 1963 until the end of the, the classic series, which was in 1980s. I think 1989, oh, something like that, 87 maybe. Uh, they're going to air worldwide over a seven week period starting may 29 so they can fans can tune in each monday to friday at 11 a.m pdt whatever what's that pacific daylight time i guess and whatever that is in america uh to catch episodes on twitch.tv slash twitch presents and look i've even got a little uh video because i know I, i just i just know you guys so into it let me see if i can play you this video uh, now you guys won't hear the audio, but everyone else will. You just have to sit and watch the uh, the video. Hang on. So when it finishes, it only goes for thirty seconds. Skip ad. Here we go. Look at this stuff. Look at this goodness. Everyone is talking about the biggest event of all times. Gather your companions for over five hundred episodes of Space Operatic Mystery, starring. Who are you? I'm 
the doctor. Doctor who? Don't you recognize me? The time traveling, shape shifting, fugitive alien from that one crazy planet with the blue police squad. Classic. Oh, <laughs> that Doctor Who. Watch Classic Who on Twitch starting May 29th. How good's that? How good's that? Now, <laughs> as I uh, I got it without sound, but it's good. Mm. Now, as I uh, my comments. And I'm still talking to myself, I know, because you guys don't care. But <laughs> as you would We're know. Just watching you in excitement, mate. Oh, I'm I know. Really happy that you're, you're so excited over this. I know. Well, Jace has be, be, last week he was saying that he, he wants to get all the old episodes, so he, here's Jace his is, chance. Uh, Jace is probably out there on Facebook Live, you know, mm. while you're talking about it, th- wishing he was here. That's probably what he's doing now. He's probably DVRing the internet somehow. You know, <laughs> trying to download them and, and copy them all or something. But uh, yeah, what my interest in this is, is not just because of the show, but yeah, as you know or may not know, that there was a lot of stories in Doctor Who that were destroyed back in the 70s, the early 70s, and it was all the stories mainly from the 60s uh, because they were they were shown once and that was it. Uh, they said, we're never going to show stuff again. The BBC didn't show stuff again. They showed it once and that was it, but they stored them all. They were running out of space because they stored all the reels of all these shows. So they said, let's just cull everything. They burn them all. And uh, it was only later in in life that someone said, oh, you shouldn't have chucked all those out. So they started going around all the other TV stations and going, yep, 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 trying to bring them all back. But there's still some missing. Uh, and I'd like to know that... Uh, whether when this run on Twitch goes on, whether or not the missing episodes that have been recently returned, I wonder if they're going to be in the playlist. So that'd be interesting. And also, I wonder if, uh, you know, there's a couple of stories that have been cartoonerized, you know, because the, the, sto- the original video doesn't exist. The audio exists for some weird reason, but the video doesn't exist. Yeah. So they've cartoonerized it and placed it to the original audio. So I wonder if they're going to show the cartoon versions of some of those. So interesting. All right. I know you guys love it. They've got to fill the gap somehow, don't they? It'd be yeah. good if they can find them, those, those oh, missing episodes. They've That'd been be looking great. for 30 years. So <laughs> They must be worth a bit of money then, those ones, if you can find them. No, uh, I don't know. I think you could probably, you could probably you ask. Can find the, yeah, yeah. You could find a good copy, like an original copy or something somewhere. Yeah, because I think, I think at the... I think legally... It, it still belongs to the BBC. doesn't matter where you find it or where you get it. Yeah. But I think they're sort of not going to worry about any prosecution. They just want it back. Maybe you could... I wonder how much they'd pay you for it if you yeah. found it. <laughs> well, maybe you could ask for a couple of dollars. Yeah, yeah, why not? I've got this missing episode and I'm the only one who's seen it. How much are you going to give me for oh, it? Oh, yeah. You get 10th Planet Part 4, you'd be rolling in the coin. Um, now, now uh, Optus and Telstra. Optus took Telstra to court over... Unlimited uh, unlimited ads. They said they were misleading. That's a bit of a turn up, isn't it? Optus. I was say unlimited internet then. I was going to get excited. Well, it's the same sort of thing. Well, remember how Opt- uh, Telstra's been doing this unlimited internet on the mobile phones? And, yeah. And so Optus says, uh, don't really like that. So they took them to court because <laughs> I think Optus had a bit of a problem with their unlimited stuff a while back and got, you know, yep. dragged through the mud. So they've probably thought, well... We're not going to take that. I want, we want Telstra to drag through the same mud as we did. So Telstra said the use of unlimited in the context of the ad conveys nothing definitive, doing no more than to cause a viewer to wonder what about its meaning. And then the ads themselves are just teasers meant to foster intrigue and arouse attention through consumer curiosity rather than conveying a clear message or statement to customers. I think it was pretty clear that the first, first thing I did when I saw unlimited as I just went, what's the catch? You know, and then and the catch was the speed slowed. So to that end, I don't think I've got a real problem That's with the word like, uh, Optus, unlimited. Isn't, it, isn't, it? isn't Optus's one gig, it's unlimited, but you're limited to one gig a day or something like that? Or what? I'm not sure what Optus is doing, but then they one might... Of those, but, one of those phone people had that. Yeah, but they're not obviously not doing unlimited because they wouldn't have taken them to court. But well, I don't, I don't know. If it's slowed, it's it's still unlimited. I can, I can probably I can accept that. I don't think I'm going to barney too much about it. But anyway, what I, what I think Optus does is that once you've run out of your data on your normal plan, uh, you pay uh, an extra ten dollars and you get an extra data, an extra gig yep. of data. Right. Yeah. So, but what Telstra was doing was say you've got your forty they gig. They do that. Yeah, they don't they? Yeah, but Telstra and TPG and what's the other one? Not Vodafone. So they were saying, well, we'll give you 40 gig, right, for your plan, 
And then once you hit your 40, well, then you well you can have unlimited, but you're only going to get it at 1.5 meg down. So it's going to crawl. So And that's the same, yeah. But I'm happy with that. Optus took this action because it felt the advertisement was likely to mislead consumers. So yeah, so they're all, all, all of a sudden worried about everything. Uh, Optus took Telstra to court early this week, claiming the use of unlimited had no qualification or explanation. Oh, well, dibber-dobbers, aren't they? <laughs> These, these big businesses make so much money out of suing each other. I know. It's just like... They all do it. Yeah, it's just like it's su- getting sued. It's just like a, a little expense item on the and profit all, and loss and these days. Again. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. A couple of years later, so they sue each other again for something. Probably because managing director of Optus uh, sues Telstra. Then you go back to Telstra. Then you'll sue Optus. He just takes the same money around every company. <laughs> so, yeah. every, so he's ticking boxes I'm wherever he goes. Either. Yeah, it's crazy. Like children, like yes, to... yes. Well, it's like oh, Apple, no. Apple and Samsung. They're both in court again, and I think it dates back to the iPhone three. And then you know. they're not friends with Google, and then they are friends with Google. Oh, Steve! Then Microsoft steps in, and they're friends with Apple. Then they're not friends with Apple. Then they're friends with Google. Then they're friends with Samsung. It's just yeah. all over the place. Steve Jobs would have none of this Google business. He hated him. He'd have none of it. Um, what do we? Well, ex- I wonder if Steve Jobs might have. Uh, might have added touchscreens to a Mac desktop computer. That would have surprised me. Ah, uh, I reckon he would have. Because I reckon he would have done that for some reason. Everybody says Mac has got plenty of innovation going on, but they yeah, touchscreens on their desktop computers yet, or their laptops. Yeah, I reckon mobile devices that have touchscreen. Well, I, I didn't. I always thought maybe like a touchscreen desktop, a touchscreen laptop. Uh, maybe not a so, but maybe a bit not maybe really not useful. With a touch, touch strip or touch bar or whatever it is yeah. they on there. But like, yeah, yeah cause like that, their, their laptop pros had like a touch bar or something. Yeah. Cause I just thought like, if you're leaning across all the time, it's not really conducive, but then my daughter got a touch screen laptop for when she went to this high school and she, yeah, she keyboards and the screen. Oh, so it's, it's awesome when you're scrolling. Yeah. Like if, you, if you've got a mouse pad on your, on your laptop and you're trying to scroll it with your finger or you're using the up and down arrows or whatever, but if you've got a touch screen there, your natural reaction is just to reach over and slide it up. Mm. Yeah, if, if, you, if it is touch, yeah. Um, but, so what we, quicker, but what do we what do what do we what do we expect at the Apple's worldwide developer conference this year? Well, we've got an expectation of a couple of things. Now, I don't know. They've also this guy, whoever wrote this story, says that it's also known as the Dub Dub DC. I never heard it called that before. But anyway, it's Apple's yearly conference aimed at developers. It's a weekend long event with a focus on software kicked off with a keynote that tends to include a handful of big announcements it's all but certain apple will announce updates to major updates to the ios so ios 12 mac os 10.14 watch os 5 and tv os 12 Uh, perhaps the biggest addition with mac os 10.14 will be the ability for ios 12 apps to work with mac computers now that's cool that's good that merger would be a major talking point, although some analysts have said that it, it, it isn't likely to happen until 2019. So with the Watch OS 5, we may see Apple's purchase of this company called Bedit come to fruition with some integrated sleep monitoring in the Apple Watch. There will also be some new watch faces. That's probably about time because they're pretty tight with watch faces as far as I know. And tweaks to the control center. But, um, I thought they had tons of them. Well, no, I don't think they do. I don't think they I don't do. Have, I don't know enough about Apple. No, no. Well, I haven't got my phone back. Well, at least I, or at least I choose not to say too much about it mm. if I can. I haven't got my Android phone back yet. Kogan got it the other day. I'm very so. upset about that. I was all excited. You were switching from Apple to Android, and then it blew up. It made me think of someone else that had that issue. Yeah, well, like Telstra. Telstra's outage. Damn, <laughs> Yeah, but Telstra's outage last week, 3G and 4G mobile services. Uh, the network was struck yet again by another outage uh, earlier this week, taking down the 3G, 4G voice and data services across Australia. They Telstra confirmed that the issue was impacting 4G, which in turn caused congestion for 3G. So um, other problems... I oh. must be the only one on the, on the face of the planet it didn't affect because I didn't even know what happened. Are you on Telstra? Yeah. So the Australia, this is like this is just getting a bit of a, a mountain of problems. The, the Australian government is currently investigating previous Telstra outage that impacted Triple O calls on May the fourth, 
and also another major outage on Telstra's 4G network this month on May the 1st. So what is going on here? Not much, obviously. Now, you would have heard over the weeks, Paul from, I don't know, Queensland, he's been... he's got on the web page and he's he's uh sent us an audio voice message and you can too just go to the web page go through the buttons and you'd be able to do it but i was talking to him and he's gone to belong he's ported over from optus to belong and uh it was a really quick port eight minutes it took him so he's really excited about that and uh so i'm going to follow up with him and see how the belong goes which is a part of telstra but uh, i'm thinking of changing over to them as well i've got uh i've already sent away you get them posted to you they're little the little SIM cards, and uh, yeah, right, yeah, and then you just port across, port away. But the good thing about them is you've got a data bank, unlimited data bank, and also you can data gift uh, to other belongs. So that's Which pretty good. To, that, that's the, the the data bank. You have to use that within a certain time or something. No, not this one. As far as I know, yeah. this one just just goes and goes and goes and goes. So. Yeah, well, that's what that's what I understand from the website. Like I haven't, I, I did. From what I remember, I went I went into the little bit of nitty gritty. I'll have to do it again. Yeah. But but anyway, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, and look, I've got probably what another, what another one story I think, and I oh, no, another couple. But this one is I'm going to go pretty much straight through. So you guys, if you've got a comment, just uh, pipe up because we're near near the end of the show. But scammers, like there's been so many scams and there's all just continuous scams on the internet and through the phones and all this sort of stuff. The ACCC... That's terrible, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Like here's some stats that I've got here today. Australia has lost hundreds of millions to online phone scammers and that's just in 2017. The ACCC released a report that found Australians had lost a total of $340 million to scammers in 2017. Now, the figure's probably higher than that because there'd be people that aren't reporting it uh, that because, I don't know, for whatever reason, embarrassment or whatever, they've, they've hung themselves or whatever. The highest, they just don't give up, do they? No, no, that's right. The highest losses ever since the Commission started reporting the scam activity. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty bad. Uh, look, there's a, the graph here that I've flashed up here. Uh, the biggest take for the scammers was investment scams, uh, 64 million, uh, dating and romance scams, 42 million. Uh, yeah, and some of these, like, you know when something's gone wrong, when, like, they say, if they get the phone call and it's the ATO saying, we, you know, we're going to come after you, we're going to knock your door down and, you know, threaten you it's and whatever. That's not the ATO. No, they take, first of all, they take 10 years to get around to anything, so it's not the ATO. And also, the ATO doesn't want payment in iTunes gift cards for some reason. Not <laughs> that's uh, not legal that's tender. One. Yes, yes, not legal tender. So it would be good because I uh, you could. I don't think Tim Cook bought into the uh, into the the government tax station department. Did he by any chance? No, it wouldn't be wouldn't surprise me. But uh, no, iTunes, iTunes gift vouchers. No, he probably doesn't need them anyway. Probably gets it all for free. He probably got his. No, he probably would have, wouldn't he? Have a his little iTunes account to be flagged somehow, and anything in that oh, in that little he'd iTunes be the, library. He'd be the top of the top of the list in iTunes, wouldn't he? Oh, anything he wants. Well, little Timmy Cookie Monster. <laughs> now, now, Optus will close Virgin Mobile. A didn't even know Optus owned Virgin Mobile. I knew they Virgin used Optus's network, and if I had known that ten years ago, probably would have realised why well, my phone didn't work ten years ago. So <laughs> Optus is set to phase out its Virgin Mobile brand over the next two years and will contact customers in the coming days to outline their options. And probably you've got to get an Optus account more than likely. Virgin Mobile Australia became a wholly owned subsidiary, uh, subsidiary blah, you know that word, of Optus yep. back in 2006. So Telstra also run a similar business model. It's a low cost option and it's Belong, which we've just spoken about. Yeah. So there we go. That was a, a quick rundown. Sorry? Yeah. So yeah. There you go. Who but, owns... I always... I didn't realise Optus owned Virgin. No. Nah. I thought Virgin was owned by Virgin. Well, same here, but... What's, I, he, what's his name with the blonde hair? Richard. Richard. Branson. I thought he, I thought he was the, the, the... I thought Virgin phones were through him. It shows how much I know. I think they probably so started out like a, that. Yeah, so Optus probably bought it off him. Did they probably? 
Yeah, I'd say so, yes. They partnershiped in it or something and helped them kick it off the ground and then they probably got out. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's good. So how, how's the stream? Looks like people have got a couple of people there chatting, so that's good. So the stream obviously was working. Um, yeah, it still is. Justin it's gets... getting a bit faster too, I've noticed. Oh, Sometimes good. When I'm talking to you on the screen... It comes up on the phone as well. I'm like, it's, oh, it's there. on fire. Justin says he gets three to four scam calls a week. He just leads them on for 10 minutes or so. Give them false info. That's what, yeah, that's a bit of fun. A bit I, of fun. You know, I usually, if they don't answer within a few seconds, you know, you know, it's a, it's a spam call straight away. That's what I usually do. And then you just don't answer. You just hang up. If you don't get an answer immediately. I mean, any any spam call could be immediately, but most of the ones that are relaying around the world, there's always a, you know, there's always that few seconds before they talk to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's right, that's right. Um, yeah, so hopefully, look, there's probably been a couple of little teething problems with the stream, um, but uh, overall, there are they? I can't, I can't bring up the uh, thing for some reason. You made me close it. Cool. <laughs> Overall, oh, it's uh, I think it's, it's not bad for our first go back into the live streaming because I think oh, we haven't live streamed for years. Uh, last time was on Ustream, I think it was, and everyone kept getting buffers and all this sort of stuff, so we just canned it. But everyone nowadays coming on the MBN and you know, so Jordan's actually streaming it. He's uh, capturing the the. I'm one of the uh, one of the few Telstra people that have a 74 to 80 megabit upload. Is that right? So mm. that's why I got stuck doing it. <laughs> yeah, Chris says, Glenn is way out. Bit hard to... Oh, that must be sync-wise. Yeah, so I don't know why some people have uh, are sort of more in sync than others. Not sure, but we'll work on it. We'll work on well, it. That might be your one megabit upload. Oh, hang on. You had that fixed to five megabit, didn't you? I did. I, yes, I did. Yes. What's going on with that? Uh, I don't know. You know what it probably is because I'm capturing the screen and resending it, so it's probably there's a bit of a delay getting it to me, and then me uploading it again back to there. It's probably a bit no. Of, I don't think. Uh, I think they're like a spam call that's going around the world first before it gets anywhere. I think they're just saying that it's out of sync, so I'm not sure why it shouldn't go out. It shouldn't be out of sync if you're getting it in sync at your end. It shouldn't be out of sync when it hits Facebook. But we'll work on it. That's uh, we're working on it. All right. Yeah, there might be some. Uh, there might be some weeks we can work on there mm. yeah. so what we might do is uh end the show and for you guys who are in the facebook go, live Jordan's voice is worse is wise sync wise oh sync wise oh i thought it said jordan's yeah. voice is wise hang on what <laughs> very wise must be the beard you the know glasses must be out of sync too there glenn <laughs> it must be uh yeah all right jordan is worse sync wise yeah we'll work we'll work on that we'll see what, what we can do all right, so, um, yeah, hang around in there. We might just leave it streaming as far as we can go and see what happens. Uh, all right, good stuff. Thanks, uh, Joe, for coming in and going to the sea bit and telling us all about that stuff. That was great. No worries. That's, that was really good. And so, yeah, don't forget to catch up with Joe's on his website and uh, on his Facebook page. Yeah, excellent. And what's your next What's your next outing? Is that AWS or you've been that? That was two weeks ago. Uh, that was Amazon Web Services. Yeah, that was about four weeks ago. Yeah. Um, later on in the year, I plan on going to Melbourne for the IoT uh, Expo. Oh, right. Who yeah, put, that'd be good. Yeah, who's that put, would be good to go. Who's putting that on, do you know? Um, I think it's actually the uh, IoT, um, uh, what they call it, I'm not sure what they call it, the actual IoT. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, right, right, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, all right, well, hopefully, yeah, take your camera if you're going down there, that'd be good. All right. I'm in Melbourne, so I should be the one dobbed in for that, shouldn't I? I should make the effort. How far from Melbourne are you? No, about 45 minutes. Oh, that's not too bad. Mm. Not too bad, 45 minutes to an hour if I get a good run. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Um, yeah, all right, cool. Well, thanks, Jordan, for coming in and doing the stream and whatever not. So it's great. All right. Thank you. Good stuff. Don't forget our Maybe Facebook. I'll get some more stories next week because I know what I'm doing now. I'll have a bit more time to that's research all right. before I come on. I've been researching everything else. <laughs> That's all right. We had a bit of a full show. Don't forget the Aussie Tech Radio on the TuneIn platform. Just uh, download the TuneIn Radio platform. Search up Aussie Tech Radio. Just when you're on your own, by yourself, want something to do, tune it up. Aussie Tech Radio and uh, Wall to Wall 24-7 podcast Australia, from Australia. And uh, you'll be forever entertained for the whole day and never want to leave it. All right. Until next week, it's bye for now. See you, Jordan. See you, Joe. 
and go the Sharks. Later. See you later, Facebook. (laughs) 